Are you ready for the Low Bros Network? It's the show where you control what's on the agenda. Ask us anything and we're broad bound to answer. Starring Rick Nash, Corporate King, and the Queen of Irish Wrestling, Lady Harvey. It's Ask Low Bros. So last week we spoke uh, about how Katie Harry and Corbett Keane, in a team bonding exercise uh, ahead of their Lobo Pill Tag Team Championship match at SummerSlam, um, are, like, they, they decide to go on a road trip together. They're both going down to court, of course, Corbett Keane, the commentator for Venus, Katie Harvey, the like, special referee in the main event, so they decided, right, okay, let's try to put our differences aside, go on a road trip, see if we can find common ground, how did it go, guys? Did you find common ground? Okay, I went, I travelled up with Katie. I travelled back with uh, Daniel Manning, shout out. <laughs> and there's a reason I travelled back with Daniel Manning. Katie can't drive. I know she's like, <laughs> I know she's like absolutely like fucked up her arms. And I was thinking, isn't it mad if somebody whose arms are in that state can, can actually drive? That's actually really cool. And I was buzzing to get into the car and see. Well, no, she can't. That, that's actually it. Um, and, you know, I, I reminded her of this several times. So when we were going down the motorway, she just like threw me out of the car. And like, literally on, on the motorway, I was like bouncing and rolling down the road. Nearly, nearly getting hit by other cars as I was driving by. And I thought, like walk from Limerick to Cork like it was it was mad I actually forgot he was um in the car at the start of the trip <laughs> <laughs> I have a seven seater and I had seven people in the car including myself <laughs> we were just driving up the keys just about to turn off to the road to to Cork and I just I just went Keen <laughs> is Keen in the car and I turned around because he hadn't said anything Aww. up until that point and he was just sitting there like a little lamb that soon went away um, when the abuse started rolling in from everyone and then he just joined in and then bonded with other people and then we stopped at a garage about halfway right and I was at the deli I, uh, this is a real story I just remembered uh, there was that uh, I could have killed him uh, Klong was in the car right Klong gets very excitable of course and um, Klong asks a lot of stupid questions mm-hmm. so we're standing at the deli and they have this sign saying like buy five copies get six get a six free and Klong just walks up to me and shouts in my ear do you think I have to buy them all now or would they let me wait? And I was like, don't be so fucking stupid, Klong, and be quiet. And then two minutes later, Keen walks up, do you think I'd have to buy all six <laughs> coffees it's now? A valid question. And it I just looked question. at him, looked at Klong, and Klong's like, I asked her the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know when you have the moment where you don't know whether someone's winding you up or <laughs> you've just been in the car too long? I, I just had to storm off. That's, that's actually like with Klong, like 24-7, it's like, is he serious? No. <laughs> <Is that> like, <laughs> so you bonded with Klong and made best mates through mutual hatred of. of oh, Katie. that's that's how like everyone everyone makes friends through hating Katie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a, a pretty good running team of the car. How is it like you're the mammy of Irish wrestling? You look after everyone, make sure everyone gets there. You stop them worried about Keen, and this is what you get. I know. And, and like, I wouldn't mind. We even stopped in a garage where I thought he could get Pringles because he told me uh-huh. he can't get them in Circle K's. <laughs> there was no Pringles. So, that was, that was on, on her, like. so, so the niceness of the gesture. So fuck me, right? Well, like. yeah. <laughs> What's that about, like? Actually, I, <laughs> when, when there was no Pringles, I looked at him and just, like, fear on his face because he didn't know what else to pick. <laughs> and it was just like, I just... I, I don't know what's wrong with you, Keen. I just there's there's no Pringles. <laughs> All right, I'll pick something else. I just I just don't know what to get. Okay, <laughs> it's a genuine concern. I don't know what, to do. <laughs> what did you sell on? Well, uh, nothing. I just left and then like I went to a different shop later on and got I had to get the fucking shitty small tubes, you know, like the little like tiny ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was like fuck it, this will do. And yeah. Did, didn't want to risk getting another packet of custard creams in front of me, you see. <laughs> no, because then Kate would bully me again, so it's, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> the saga continues. Guys, <laughs> he's have the team in like nine days from now, so uh, fun, fun. Guys, it's a show where you control what we talk about. It's Oslo Blows. We just in literally anything wrestling or otherwise, and we are blood bound to answer. Dave and Anna. Hov Talk Nerdy to me on the Lobos Network did just that, and he asked, if your life was a movie, what songs would be on the soundtrack? It's quite a good question. It is. Good Very job, good Dave. question. Well done. Um, like, does he mean, like, what genre and stuff? Well, you can pick, like, particular songs, like, if you have, or, like, you can pick a genre if you can't think of particular songs. Screamo. What? Screamo. 
Screamo. Screamo emo. Oh, right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, MCR, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 That yeah. Just, actually, no, the actual uh, soundtrack to 10 Things I Hate About You, I would like to be <laughs> mine. Because it's just a, a cracking soundtrack. and Such a varied soundtrack that we're getting here. <laughs> yeah. 10 like, Things I Hate About You and Emo. Have you ever seen um, The Wedding Singer? Yeah. Where Adam Sandler writes half a song bef- while he had his fiance and half a song after. Yeah. That's my life. <laughs> it's like that road trip. <laughs> the first half of it would be the nice part where everything was nice and lovely. And then the second half would be after the coffee incident. <laughs> so it would need to be a mix of the two for okay, me. Okay, that's fair. I get it. Corporate Keaton, the soundtrack to your life. I don't know if I just lift me. You know, music here in the lifts. Like, you know, it's <laughs> like kind of ja- awkward. Like, you're waiting for something, jazz. You know, it's. Or like you know, when, you know when you're like on the phone and it's on hold and they play that kind of like, <laughs> something like that. Maybe throw in the Nintendo Wii Sports theme song because I like it. Uh, it doesn't actually have any context. It doesn't match my life at all, but I like it, so I'm just gonna put it in. Um, the USSR national anthem was a banger. You got it. I was trying to add it. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't actually make again. No, it doesn't actually fit any role in my life. I think the, the awkward waiting music as I like try to socially interact with people. I think it's like, <laughs> uh, it very fitting, actually. Um, Amazing. Yeah, I, I don't really know. For songs that like don't fit my life, uh, I ah, uh, this is cringe. So uh, before I got into wrestling, oh, I don't want to admit this, but I've I've gone too far. I had picked out what my desire video music was going to be. <laughs> 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 God, fuck! Sorry, sorry. Too, I'm a professional. He hasn't even said what the song is. Which is the fact that he's like it's his own like desire videos, like ready, you know, like the wrestling fucking thing. What's it gonna be? Uh, no, it's not now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really ironic. <laughs> it was Lucky Man by the Verve, uh, and like if you played that to clips, it'd just come across as really ironic now. <laughs> Great song. Though. You're lucky. Why? Why? <laughs> what about this makes you lucky? <laughs> that bot spot? The frog splash? No. <laughs> none of this. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm laughing. I'm of it, yeah, this, <laughs> that's the thing. That's the King, thing. Can you make that video? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that, Rick. I wouldn't. Why there's, a, there's a line why that I just did can't I tell? Why see, did if, I it was, if it was you, I'd be like, yeah, that'd be gas. But to Rick, I'm like, ah, come on, that's a bit hard. It's just you know just I mean? that dive yeah. over and over <laughs> again. Because it's mean, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Simpsons WWE got on and asked, what's your favorite one-liner from The Simpsons? You know someone's going to make the video now that you've put it out I in the know, universe. I know, that's <laughs> why. Yeah, here, Joe Starge. Warming up his keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I taught it, I'm like, fuck, I've said this now. <laughs> You've even given him the material and the content. I You've know. listed out what you wanted. I it. know, I know. Oh, I'm so fucked. <laughs> oh, that is the next week of my life. Thank God I don't get to check Twitter as much. Simpsons WWE got on and asked, what's your favorite one-liner from The Simpsons? Oh, I can't remember what episode it is, but it always cracks me up where Homer is on the phone and someone's talking to him and he just goes, I'm sorry, you'll have to speak up or I'm wearing a towel. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know what it's from. I don't know why it's always stuck in my head, yeah. but like, yeah. It works, it works. I watched, a, I have a weird thing with Simpsons. I watched it loads growing up, but I can't quote it. I don't really remember an awful lot from this. Like, like You're like that with everything that's not wrestling. Yeah, but it's weird. Like I don't understand. But then the wrestling, it's inside the beat. But Fire Ted, I can quote it. Like you know what I mean? Like that's I get every single Fire Ted reference. Yeah, but the Simpsons yeah, yeah. are kind of like I actually, I just I, it, not not much really stuck with me. So it's only because of Ireland Simpsons fans that I know a lot of the quotes. Yeah, like I, I don't want to butcher it, but you know the one where it's like. You failed, so the lesson is never try. I don't know what the actual <laughs> quote is. What's, <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the quote for that? Yeah, yeah, that's really you, you, you know yeah, the one I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, so yeah. that one. Um, yeah, that's that's it. I can I don't even think about that. I head. tend to use a different one every single week. Like you know what I mean. Something comes up, and like it's funny because like like whatever my one this that particular week will be, like incidents will happen with, within my life. Like this week, it's like 
If not a full quarter, yar, he'll be dancing for hours. That's my one this week, uh, but it'll be something else next week. I can't tell stories. So, uh, my favorite ones are the ones that are recyclable. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah things so, like, he can apply give to Give him one of these life. and that sort of stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love quotes that I can slag people with. And yes. it's just everyone just gets it straight away. Like, that's why I like that. Uh, Buck Hines. Hines, you got on and asked. Ari, 1999, because I pointed out it was 20 years ago uh, at this stage. It's fucked up uh, how old do you feel knowing there are people at your parties who might not have been alive for WCW and ECW how old do you feel knowing that anyone born in 1999 the year American Pie came out are now the same age as the characters in American Pie <sighs> yeah uh, bad bad is how I feel like I'm 32 now go fuck yourself <laughs> uh, I, f- I feel worse knowing that Keen, you weren't alive for 1999 am I right in saying no I was I was 98 you were one yeah I, was, I remember it well it was fun Good times, hanging out with the boys. We do a podcast with someone who was one in 1990. Do you vividly remember 1999? Yep. <laughs> I was 10. Yep. No, I was 11. Whoa, I was, oh yeah, because I was one and like you're a full decade older than me. Uh, this, <laughs> this is another thing that kept coming oh, yeah. up on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I went up to, it was like Big Rab and Justin Daniels were sitting behind Katie. So I went up to all of them and I was like, you know, you're half... Katie Harvey's age. <laughs> I didn't even need it. I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Declan Bird 31 got on and said, no spoilers, but were you let down by how I met your mother TV show? Uh, I thought it was a great show until the last season. I've never seen it. Um, I love How I Met Your Mother. I'm okay. a big fan. I recently watched it, and recently the same anger swelled up the first time I watched that fucking travesty of a finale really was that bad do you watch it um i was not a how i met your mother guy i would watch it quite happily if it was on the background but it was one of those post for me it was one of those post friend shows that just wasn't friends so i was like i can't get into you because i see what you're going for and well I, see it was made by the same people as friends yeah, that's the thing yeah and it was just like uh, for me it was trying to be but it just I did it didn't catch me when it should have and then afterwards I had to like yeah. bend your back so I just I missed it. So can I spoil the end then? Sure. So basically the whole the whole thing is about how Ted met the mother. Okay? Yeah. So we get through all the seasons, the very last season, um he finally meets the mother and she's fantastic. This girl called Tracy, she's brilliant, she's funny, and you you're worried all the way through that when he finally meets her, she's not gonna live up to the expectation of being the one. Yeah. She's deadly, she's a fantastic character. And then they have this whole subplot where an entire season is set at Barney and Robin's wedding. An entire season is dedicated to their wedding. Mm. And they're such a cute couple and they've had such a great story arc all the way. And then you get to the finale and you find out Barney and Robin got divorced. Oh. Just like that. Like, after spending a whole season at their wedding, they get divorced. Uh, after Ted, like, telling this entire story to find the mother, she dies. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's a barely ending. That's, that's the finish. And then Ted and Robin end up together. So the finale is um, Ted telling the story to his kids and then basically being like, and then your mother dies. And they're like, yeah, we're all sad. And then one of them just goes, but it sounds like you've always been in love with Aunt Robin and we think you should go for it. Oh. And then that's the finish, and then he leaves and gets together with Robin, and it's just fucking bullshit, like. So just a massive bait and switch. Basically. Yeah, so oh he ends God. up with Robin, but the whole thing is how I met your mother, not how I met your ended up with Robin. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's it's oh, I, I get so angry watching it. Like it was just they had the perfect end in there. They had the perfect mother. They had built this story that people didn't really see coming with Barney and Robin and then they just fucked it in the space of two episodes. Oh, fuck's sake. Yeah, no, I, I'm okay having not watched that. I hate, like, I love that though. That's, there's a satisfaction in that. When you hear something ended shit that, like, people are really into and you're like, I didn't get more of that train. <laughs> <laughs> and the sad part is people think that about fucking Game of Thrones now. Now I'm angry. Yeah. Uh, Joe Stodge got on and asked, if every character Arnold Schwarzenegger has ever played in a movie, got in a big massive fight, who'd be the first to die? Who'd be the eventual winner? Do you know any Arnold Schwarzenegger movies? Terminator? Yeah. 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 Is that it? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Have you ever seen... Okay, oh, I'm, I'm no, barking up the wrong tree here. Last Action Hero. No. Uh, Kindergarten Cop. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Junior, where he's a twin. Oh, J- Junior, where he's a pregnant man. Yes. No. Uh, twins, where he's twins with Danny DeVito. <laughs> no. Like, these are all the classics. Yeah. Jingle All the Way. No. You haven't seen Jingle uh, All the Way? Big Show's in that. Oh, he fights man. Big Show in that. <laughs> yeah. And you saw me. <laughs> yeah. um, and I haven't even got to his action films, like fucking Predator, Conan no, the Barbarian. No. Um, 
well, numerous Terminators. Dave. Dave. <laughs> he's random me and I'm looking up his IMDb. Uh, he's in End of Days. He's great no. in that. Um, I'm a, I'm a big Arnie fan, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Total Recall. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, a fucking movie. Seen that. Right, so. Okay. Oh, True Lions. Sorry, True yes. Lions is my favourite Arnie film. Yeah, Fucking that. awesome. Right, okay, Katie, you're the experts. Who dies first, Commando? Who dies first? Uh, who Conan, fuck. So many good ones. Uh, who dies first? Who gets... Uh, who wins? So, I think they should eliminate um, Terminator first. Ooh. They should do that trope they all, of, they all team up to get rid of him because he's clearly going to win because he's the best. Right. Who's going to throw the Terminator over the top rope? Conan the Barbarian and... Do a lot from Predator could do it too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, easy. Um, my winner, I want to be. Uh, I can't remember his character name in Last Action Hero, but he was my favorite. Ah, oh, yeah, that's just so. Movie. The plot of Last Action Hero is amazing. I think you actually would like it. Um, where he's he's in the film, isn't he? And yeah. he, then he comes out of the film into the real world, and he thinks the real world is the film world. It's brilliant. It's really good. Yeah. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not selling that much shit. He's, he's an action hero in a movie, and then he comes out of the movie into the real world. Right. But he's still the character. He is Keen Fabe. Ah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is Keen Fabe. Yeah. <laughs> he is you on a wrestling podcast. <laughs> that's it. There, there. That's how you sell Keen on that movie. There you go. So last action hero wins? Yeah. There we go. Right. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, T. Kenny. Oh, here we go. Here's your chance to win the captaincy back. T. Kenny... 26-22, got on and asked. <laughs> he asked us to write this down. We're not going to do that because okay, it's an audio form. He goes, you've got 30 seconds. Keen, I'm going to have you go first because that <laughs> didn't, even though that gives Katie a clear advantage, it didn't seem to help last week. <laughs> in 30 seconds, list as many WWE champions oh. as you can, starting in three. Hang on, is this any belt? No, WWE heavyweight champions. Are we counting the Universal then? We no. will count the Universal. Are we universe. counting oh, the WCW wait, one? We'll count, the, do, no, we'll count the World Championship in WWE. I'm not going to be too The big gold belt. This. The big gold belt. Oh, okay. wow, Only in WWE. so many. Holy shit. This hasn't actually helped me at all, though. This is just open up. It's just like, you know, there's so many. You're just like, all right. whoa. <laughs> Three, two, one. Go. Kofi, Orton, Cena, Michaels, Triple H, Undertaker, Austin, Rock, Big Show, Kane, Kane, yeah. Uh, Kali, uh, 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 I said seen it already. Uh, 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 Jinder Mahal, did I say Jinder Mahal? Uh, yeah, cool. Um, 15 seconds. Uh, uh, Balor, Balor, Owens, Jericho, Benoit. Uh, uh, 10 seconds. Uh, uh, Eddie Guerrero, uh, fucking... Uh, Five forget, seconds. Sean Stasiak. Uh, nope. uh, 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 and uh, you're out of time. You got 19. Decent, decent. Uh, what won it for you last week? Like 11? But that was 20 seconds, Royal Rumble winner. Well, Sorry. It was so easy because you had everything like arranged in your mind this year, this year, this year, this year, this year. Whereas that was just like... Talk into the mic. Oh, fuck, yeah. <laughs> <They're not sorry. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, was, that was hard, is what I was saying. Yeah. All right. 30 seconds, Katie. Okay. you got to beat 19, starting right. at 3, 2, 1, go. Orton, Batista, Ric Flair, Triple H, uh, Shawn Michaels, Edge, Christian, Cena, Orton... Uh, Vince McMahon, Stone Cold, Rock, Mankind, Kane, Undertaker, um, Booker T. Uh, uh, oh my God, I'm panicking now. seconds, you need four more. Oh shit, um, I said uh, Edge, Christian, seconds. Del Rio, um, Del Rio, Jinder Mahal, Daniel Bryan. Two more. Oh my God. Three seconds. Oh, people screaming at One. me. No, it's yeah, gone. Unlucky. It's gone. Oh, oh, that I was been, so close. Oh, I would have been so pissed if she won. That was swear. so close. It was so good for so long. Up to 15 seconds. You had it in the bag. It's fucking hard and fair. And I could have said, like, Kofi, oh. the current champion. Yeah. <laughs> Just think Brock Lesnar, the Brock. current champion. Oh. Reigns, Rollins. Oh, yeah. oh God. It's hard. I if you just said, yeah, those names, you would have won. But Keane is still the team captain. <laughs> now, that could still change. If you win next week, when we do That's the challenge... That's bollocks, because 2-0, and then by the time it comes no, out... No, it's, ti- it's title belt rules. Next goal winner? That's it's t- bullshit. It's title, no, it's title belt rules. If she beats you, it doesn't matter how Champions many times she beats you. Champion's advantage. Hey, no, that's, that's not, not what that is. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Advan- yeah, champion's advantage. Look at myself DQ. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah, you just say a really offensive word or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how that works. <laughs> I just like give Katie abuse. Like, call her all sorts of names in her son. It's like, oh, here, ring the bell. Ring the bell. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hendon the Great got on last. Who would you have in a Lions Den match from current day wrestling? Oh. What's a Lions Den match? Is that the MMA thing? Do you remember? Yeah, Ken Shamrock and Steve Blackman oh. got in an octagon, and but they had weapons in the on the top. Oh my God, Matt Riddle and Katie Harvey. <laughs> 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 I'd uh, watch, I'd watch. <laughs> Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that, I could actually see that happening. But, like, that's an NXT match because they do all the cool slips. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They bring back the cool oh, slips. Oh, that'd be cool if they brought that back. Yeah, <laughs> Shayna Baszler in a women's style match in NXT in a Lions Den match. Yeah, you just... Could they... I th- they might do that. Yeah. Like, that's not out that's, of... That's so, with someone like Mia Yim, who's a legit... Taekwondo black yeah, belt. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Andrew Scrack got on and said, right, I've been watching Jackass 3, and my question to you, if I was wrestling with Jackass, who'd be who? This is my fucking question. Go Growing up, it. Jackass was my shit. It's Growing right, up. it's all you then. Um, so yeah, right. You can consult. I accept, I'm like, whoever, if I don't like you, make Ryan Dunn, who's my favourite, I'll be pissed. Ryan Dunn is your favourite? Yeah. Ryan Dunn, I idolise Ryan Dunn growing up. I idolise oh Ryan Oh my god, Dunn. is this the <laughs> world? Did we just become together? best friends? I, did I not talk about this on the show before, ever? No. The, like, Ryan Dunn was the first celebrity death I grieved over. I was, yeah. I, I, I yeah. idolised him. I Like, literally, it was we- a weird person to idolise, but that was... Yeah, yeah, he was great. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. I just thought ah! he was the funniest. The woke like, anyway. it's happening. Right, <laughs> so, there's nine main characters, um, but, um, yeah, anyway. Johnny Knoxville, I said, was Jordan Devlin, just because he's the face. Just because he's, like, okay. the face of Irish wrestling right now. That's kind of my logic behind it. Yeah. Bam Margera, right? I went with a... It could be any more than hype member. I went with Darren Kearney, but it could be, could be right. any of them, right? Yeah, I see it. I went with that because April Margera, Bam's mom, is Katie. <laughs> right? <laughs> Husband's <laughs> called Phil, but also, anytime Bam wakes him up, <laughs> anytime Bam wakes him up at, like, fucking four in the morning to, to, you know, light their bed on fire or whatever the fuck it was he was doing, like... April's reaction is exactly what Katie's reaction would be. Like it was just it wasn't even like anger, like fuck you, it was just like BAM And I have I have said Darren yes! <laughs> I can imagine a hundred percent imagine it. Like it. a hyper bammer Jerry more than hype member Nailed with that it. like perfect. Ryan Dunn I actually went with Justy. Oh, I was thinking that yeah. too. Because who else would swim in their own shit? <laughs> <laughs> he just did. like not only that, like I was thinking as well, I went with Darren Carney because he's Margera and Ryan Dunn were kind of like almost a tag team. I know they weren't, but they were kind of like they were pals, and that was kind of their thing. And Justy and Darren Carney were a tag team, so I was like, right, Justy. But also, he looks he looks a little bit like Justy, like the beard, a little bit. And also, yeah, it just just his role, it was very Justy. It was kind of like he do all like the dumb funny shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was kind of like, but I don't know, he just pulled it off really well. I don't know, Steve-O, I actually went with Martin Steers. <laughs> I, oh, like, I see it. Yeah, it's it's, it's a thinker, of, but I see it. It's the hyper one. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like just a mad fucker, whatever. Chris Pontius, party boy, went Seshima. I thought it was yeah, kind of obvious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wee man, I I just went with Klong because he's small and he flips. <laughs> 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 I, don't know. I couldn't think. I couldn't think of a wee man off the top of my head. I went with that. Right. Um, Preston again, kind of the opposite. Just he's just big, so I just went with Tron. I, I you know because like, him and Wee man used to do all stuff, and that's kind of like. What's it? Nightmare Edition with Rock Shandy. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Um, oh, bollocks. I didn't have any for Dave England because I just he's just a lad who shat a lot. Anyone uh. who shits a lot in Irish wrestling? <laughs> 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 I don't actually... That's such a random fucking thing. I don't know. You're going to be out and people here. So maybe, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe less maybe. Not. Maybe less We'll come not. back to Dave maybe. I don't know. Someone... This is going to be a thing that Irish wrestlers tweet about afterwards. So <laughs> we'll leave it to them. Like, we won't out them. Uh... Aaron McGeehy, the final one, I went with uh, Dom Tuck. Aaron McGeehy is the Dom Tuck of Jackass. Do you want to know an interesting fact about Aaron McGeehy? What? My confirmation name is Aaron after Aaron McGeehy. No! Stop! And way. it's spelled the same way, E-H-R-E-N. <laughs> uh, no fucking way! No way! Yeah. I your name, you're named after Aaron McGeehy. Because when I was in all the fucking E-Feds, um, that was also my... My E-Fed name <laughs> after Aaron McGee. <laughs> oh, wh- why, was, why Aaron McGee? I just really liked him. But he basically, my logic for picking Dom was that he he just he was the Dom talk of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was the one that everyone kind of took the piss out of and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, actually, my first choice, my confirmation name was Stephanie after Stephanie McMahon, and that was oh rejected. God. That's, that's <laughs> the worst. Fuck. Fuck. Oh my god! How fucking Aaron. like marky oh, would that have been oh god. at this stage of my life? Oh god. <laughs> no, no. Imagine like you go up to your trio and you're just like middle name 
Never. <laughs> you, ha- you had to give a reason as well, like to the teacher before she let you pick it. So when it came to Erin, that was um, that was actually what I was going to be when I was born, and it's what my dad named his company after. So I was like, it's a family name. <laughs> but so what year were you born again? Eighty nine. So this is two thousand. So this is like when Stephanie is like marrying Test and shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's the person you chose to name yourself after. Yeah. Why? I could see like maybe 2002 where it's like she's GM, strong, powerful businesswoman and stuff. But like, Hang on. what about Stephanie then was like... I'm I thought she was real cool. <laughs> but how are you freaked out over the Stephanie stuff? Erin McGee. You're named <laughs> after Erin McGee. Not like Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, well that, like that's normal. But like Erin McGee. Kaylee Johnny Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> I, liked, I liked the name Erin. And then because I liked Erin McGee, he was like, I'm going to spell it that way because that's cool. I've but never seen it like that Aaron way. Why did you I just thought he would like... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's so random. <laughs> Maybe I saw something in myself in him. Because like <laughs> he gets bullied the whole <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> oh my God, Katie's the Aaron McGee. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. Nailed it. Nailed it. I think that was the main event question in the skies, yeah, guys. You should say that. Yeah. Brian Maniac got on and asked, out of EC, Suzuki and Goto, who do you think is more deserving of an IWGP Heavyweight Championship, Brian? None is not an option. Um, I think this one's for me somehow. Uh, oh, you're going to say Suzuki? Yeah, uh, yeah. like Suzuki would be the most natural fit, I think, if you're talking who deserves it, it's Ishii. Ishii's one of the best, he's possibly the best wrestler in New Japan, but because he doesn't have a gimmick, he's never going to get it. But if you're talking strictly from a deserving standpoint, it's Ishii. If you're talking from who could actually win it out of three, it's Suzuki. Personality, he takes all the boxes. Goto, fuck off. See, Ishii is just a shit anyone bruiser. Goto <laughs> is just a shit Aina Brown. Who's Suzuki a shit version of? No one. Do you know what I mean? Suzuki. I actually, I want that. I think it'd be deadly. <laughs> Shit, Ballymun Bruiser. My <laughs> God. <laughs> Bruiser's one of my best mates, and you are fucking, oh, like, I'm angry at that. <laughs> that's one of my friends, like, <laughs> but I'm angry at that, like, you fucking triggered me. Uh, Sweet and Sarah, fuck. They, God they hated Jesus because he spoke the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Nick got on and asked who's winning the G1B block and why is it John Moxley actually don't answer that because I'll just get upset if you disagree genuine question what's been your best moment at a G1 for, so far for me excluding all Mox moments of course it's been Zack Sabre Jr. screaming about Boris Johnson that is a low key great thing every time like Zack Sabre Jr. when he's losing now blames Boris Johnson become a prime minister like he's really getting into this whole uh, deal uh, but yeah no um, best moment for me uh, best match has been Okada against Osprey. So yeah, it's it is, it's like you've picked a great moment there, but it's it's more about the matches than the moments, and that's the best match. Um, I don't know. That's a thinker. I'm gonna do awards for the G1 when it's over, so I, I'll I'll get back to you on that. Um, have you had a favorite moment yet? No, this is just a blur. Everything <laughs> it every, is. I can't pick one standout match. Not one match stood out for me. From maybe, maybe Moxley Ishii stood out for me a little bit, but most none of the matches stand out to me at all. It's the problem, like as well, like even if it's like all great wrestling, like it's all melding into one. Like I can't, I can't remember last week. I would have said why I loved Osprey against Okada. Now I'd struggle to because I've seen so much since. <laughs> it's just. For moments, uh, I know she's like slewed Moxley moments, but I imagine that's for her. For me, Moxley and Shota doing the you see middle finger thing. Yeah. Where he's like, uh, I'll stick with the middle fingers and you do the talking. And he's just kind of like, and he just sticks up his middle <laughs> finger himself because he doesn't know what he just said. <laughs> so he's about to stare into the camera. I love the whole Shota and Moxley stuff. Yes. I'm really, uh, Moxley complete, like this, ah. Oh. Like, I'm turning into Nicola a little bit with this shit. He's, like, he's fantastic. He's fucking deadly out he's here. Like, I'm, killer. And, and show that as well. I'm mad into that now. Moxie against Ishii, the start of the match, where they just fucking went head to head and just started beating the piss out of each other. That was like a real... Ah! It was fucking fantastic. Like, yeah, so that, that'd be up there too. Mr. Linda Block, John got on and said, With SummerSlam having the reputation of being the best wrestling show of the big four... What is your favourite SummerSlam match last moment? Mine is Undertaker vs. Austin, 1998. That massive leg drop to the table. Katie Harvey, what is your favourite SummerSlam match or moment? Oh, God, I thought I said my name in the question. <laughs> 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 uh, does 
Does SummerSlam have the reputation? I, I think, don't think yeah. it is. I, I think it's fucking worse than the big four by far. No, I disagree. I think you're letting recency bias kick it in. SummerSlam, like, has constantly been, like, the the cool... Like, that's where you get the WrestleMania main events that we don't get, that we fancy book in our head, that we want to mm. see a WrestleMania, but then we end up getting, like, Triple H against the person we wanted to see in that dream match. And then SummerSlam is where they give it to us. They've dropped the ball the past two, three years, I agree. But, um, no, I think... Yeah, I think SummerSlam used to be the cool, like it used to be WrestleMania for like the smart fans. That makes sense. Like my only standout match I can think of was DX versus Mike Mans, and I remember loving that when I was younger. I don't know if that has aged well at all. <laughs> right. It may. I I haven't seen it since I was that age, so I don't remember. But um, nothing from SummerSlam stands out off the top of my head. I can't think of. I was actually just checking. Is the match I was thinking of on SummerSlam? I think it is. Like, what what, what match? Uh, Randy Orton and Christian. Oh, that was a really good match. The yeah. One. Oh, and the other one, the Dudley's Hardys versus Edge and Christian. Yeah. The, the first the triple TLC match. The first TLC yeah. match. There's so many great SummerSlam matches. Triple oh, H, Shawn, Shawn Michaels. Michaels. Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon in the ladder match as well. Yes, That's that great. counts. Uh, they had uh, Brett and Mr. Perfect, was it? Yeah. Yeah, That that's a SummerSlam. Oh, no, wait, I think that was King of the Ring. Brett no, no, it says here 1991. Yeah, um, also, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Shawn Michaels' comeback match. HBK against uh, Hulk Hogan. Fucking excellent match. That's um, gas. That's what the, was is the that big... the one where he loses the shit? Like, seven, that's where like, he's just, uh, yeah, <laughs> messing. Like, yeah, it's fantastic. Um, John Cena and The Rock, or CM Punk happened on SummerSlam, did it? John no. Cena, CM Punk. Yeah, it did. Did it? No, the rematch they had. It wasn't the, rematch. the original. Uh, Money in the Bank is the classic. Uh, John Cena, Daniel Bryan, that year. Brock Lesnar against CM Punk. That was an absolute that classic. That was good, yeah. Brock Lesnar against John Cena. Um, like, there's so many. It's, like, so good. Even if you want to go back old school, the Hard Foundation against... Who they fucking wrestled in 1988? Oh, Demolition. Fucking classic. Two-hour, three-fall tag team match. Like... What like that? We studied that match when we were getting into it. Uh, when when we when I was a tag team wrestler and we were like kind of like looking up, like being nerdy about tag team wrestling. Um, and that was one of the matches we studied. Oh, SummerSlam, yeah. You do do your history, like on it. I know there's a lot now. Oh, no, that's what I meant. Like, uh, like when I'm thinking of SummerSlam like in the last decade. I yeah, can't. but there's a lot of that. Like a lot, a lot of the last decade kind of blurs into each other. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's. It's a problem when you get older as well, and you've seen so much wrestling that it all starts to melt, kind of like the G One is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of see it that way. Like, whereas, like, it's, it's, it's like I'll remember every pay per view from my youth, but you know, like, I don't know if, it, it, like, I don't know how kids view it these days. If this is their first SummerSlam, if they still, oh, they're probably it. buzzing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's different. Can't those CCFC get on and ask? What will be the storyline gimmick or, or gimmick WWE will look back on in 10 years and think, oof, shouldn't have done that. E.g. 10 years ago, there was Eugene, Piggy James. Uh, obvious one is the Saudi deal, but any others? What do we think See, now? He said WWE. I, I had an answer for this, but I thought it was just wrestling. Okay, well, what do you think? You can just say Like, it. in TNA, I remember, like, um, Eric Young ripped off Chris Melendez's pr- prosthetic leg and choked him oh, out with yeah. it, which was amazing. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life, and I love... To, if someone just stole that and did it again in WWE. Uh, there's no, like, one-legged wrestlers you can redo it now. Like, yeah. Zach Gowen's long gone and stuff. It was really funny. But I can imagine them... Um, because the whole thing was he was, like, a U.S. military, like... He was, like, you know, former Marine or whatever it was. So yeah. it's, like... He just ripped, like, it's actually gas when I think about it. It's, like... <laughs> he ripped off his leg and chucked out with it. <laughs> I don't know, but, yeah, that's probably, probably not the best thing. <laughs> I think, like... That whole Jack Swagger, don't tread on me, Zeb Coulter, incredibly racist. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. That yeah, whole thing, gonna, like. Yeah, that's not going to be great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, for me, not now, because now we're kind of on the other side of it and there's a positive outcome. But when they first started doing the women's revolution stuff mm. and they were being really hammy with it oh. and they were like, look, <laughs> women, they're great. I think that's going to age very badly. Yeah. Do you remember when they had like they started doing all the tags like it was like Team Bad Team and Bad. all that and it's just really forced in your face. It had to happen. Like they had to go through that awkward clunky stage because it, they had to do something to 
repair the past, but I think that's going to be the thing that we look back on and it's like, oh, that was kind of awkward. I like, like even little things like, again, not necessarily a bad thing, but we're dealing with it from the perspective of being able to remember the past. But 10 years from now, when you look back on it, I think little things like bringing the women out on stage and making them all be happy that they're getting a Royal Rumble, mm. I don't think that's going to age well. Like, does someone just watching that, it's like, they, they did that? Like, that's... They made them all, like, be like, Yay, yeah. look at us! Like, like watching I mean? Bray Wyatt. I don't know, like, Braun Strowman or all the hard lads being like... Like, Bobby Lashley and all being like, Yay, we got, a, yeah. we got an infernal match! Uh, because <laughs> because, uh, because the, 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 the reason that it'll look bad is because, again, it's normal now, but they won't have the perspective that we have of, of kind of seeing why they're doing it <laughs> so it'll just look like oh lads that's that's not like it even doesn't... even at the time we're all still kind of like it was weird yeah but like you could at least be like i see why they're doing it like you know what i mean like but it's just off so i think that's super what... patronizing like, yeah. yeah exactly exactly brian a maniac got on we normally don't take second questions but he sent this one in last week and i wanted to include it thanos decides to wipe out half of the wwe main roster uh, assuming that raw and smackdown an equal amount of people uh he lets you choose which of the roster to wipe out which ones do you pick uh members of each roster based on wwe.com we don't have to go through all of this but who instantly came to mind for you wiping them out from what? existence no, no. Oh wait, it's just. Oh, it's raw or SmackDown. It's raw. Or yeah. SmackDown. That was my interpretation of what. Yeah. Thing was. White bra. Oh yeah. Oh right. Okay, that was much easier. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were getting rid of individual wrestlers. Oh, like. fuck. oh no, no. No, bro. SmackDown is all my favorites. It's got the Miz. It's got Shinsuke. Yeah, it's got... The Miz is raw now. What? Yeah, I know. It gets confused. But he's always on SmackDown. Yes, but Roman Reigns is always on Raw. Oh, so he's SmackDown. SmackDown. Yeah. Oh, you got to keep Reigns and Roman. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wipe out Raw. I no, because I, I don't know why about the Miz. Yeah, but we get to keep Balor then. Well, you can pick Raw. Oh, Balor No, but goes. I don't want to wipe out no, Daniel Bryan and Becky Kofi. Goes. Becky goes if you take Raw. Yeah, but Balor goes if you take SmackDown. No, because no, no, Becky's you... technically on SmackDown. No, she's Raw. I, I, so, cause she I, I looked raw. it up because I was... She's I, Raw I, Women's Champion. Yeah, but she won it as a SmackDown superstar. Yeah, but she's now Raw. Thank so. you, yeah. Like, you can look it up, like... And the superstar <laughs> shake-up has happened, like, and, like, since then. I'm wiping 205. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no. Well, actually... Wait, is it, uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, that's yeah, an that's option that's we're, we're going to take 205, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but, uh, raw. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, Dan Jones, 25, 2002, got on and asked, Irish wrestling seems like a really positive place at the moment. The thing that killed my enthusiasm for brute rest was the amount of pervs festering at training skills. How can Irish wrestling safeguard against this? So we're not saying that... It is an issue over here. That's why he likes Irish wrestling. How can we safeguard and protect against this? It needs regulation. That's the crux of it. I know, like, here's the thing about, I, I spoke about before in the show, like, wrestling is that weird thing where it's not a sport and it's not a performance art. So it's, it's, there's no one regulating it. There's no governing body. It's not like when you do schoolboy soccer, there's, there's someone looking over all the schoolboy soccer teams. Yeah. It's not like that. So it's up to us to regulate ourselves at the moment. Um, and like, I can give examples of the way Fight Factory does that. And I'm pretty yeah. sure the School of Irish Wrestling does something very similar. So like me and Phil, for example, are the heads of Fight Factory. We both have, we're both fully qualified in child protection. Mm -hmm. Um, we have all the procedures in place. We know who to contact. We've had training and how to speak to people under 18 if, you know, we think they're being abused or we think they're having trouble at home, all that. We have, we're both occupational first aid qualified. We've got eight first aiders in Fight Factory, so there's always some first aid qualified. When you go to, like, football teams and stuff, they have regulations in place that say if you have a female team, you need a female coach. That's me. Mm. So I'm the female coach. Um, if I'm not there, there's always a, a senior female because we have females under 18. Um, and that's why we take trainees from from 14 plus because we always have a male and female coach in place. Um, aside from that, we just generally try to foster an atmosphere of conversation where there's always someone on a senior level the juniors can talk to, you know? Um, so that's how we regulate ourselves. Because me and Phil both work as managers in the gym industry, we do try to take a lot of that over into this gym as well and um, 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 we do have our shit in order like paperwork wise and stuff yeah. so that's that's always a bonus <laughs> it's part of why again another reason i like fight factory and again not to make this a fight factory propaganda answer because i know like some people are like oh isn't fight factory great but no it's the truth what i one of my first impressions there was it's a sports team 
You know what I mean? Like, and you've used a lot of regulations from other industries. You know what I mean? You haven't just said, well, we want to be wrestling coaches, so we're going to be wrestling coaches. You've, like, actually gone, what works in this field that we can transfer over to that and use it to regulate yourselves and create a benchmark for yourselves? Yeah. Um, and, and that's great, and that's the way it needs to be done. Like, we, we spoke about code of conduct on, uh, on the main show, and I think that's a good way to go in general if people are looking for, like... Uh, if, if say it's a wrestling school out there that's maybe not kind of as as as, as on the uh, on the right path as Fight Factory and is looking to oh yeah that is something that's important and we'd love to do something about that. I think a code of conduct and getting like like get your fucking trainees involved like and like have like what do people want from this? What do people? What worries people? What like is there any suggestions you can say it publicly or you can say say it in private and we'll stick it on the fucking wall? And these are our values that we stick by and they're positive and they foster a good atmosphere. That's a good way to go about it, in my opinion. If you need something to to regulate it, um, but yeah, no, Five Factory is are absolutely killing it. Like even the fucking health and safety talks you give before shows and stuff like that yeah like I I've never heard yeah. that done in other promotions before it's it's just common sense like yeah. sit everyone together tell them who the first aiders are go step by step through if something happens this is who's in charge at that moment this yeah. is who's ringing the ambulance like we had to we had to talk with people on what to say when when someone rings an ambulance because that can be very confusing if you've never rang an ambulance it's scary mm. because you have to stay calm on the line and relay their instructions yeah. um, as far as I know the Irish School of Wrestling has yeah. something similar I think they have mental health charters and they have child protection stuff yeah. in place as well um, which is fantastic. It's great. It's amazing. It, like, from where, from where I came from, there was just none of that. Yeah. Like, there were none of that. And that's not a, a dig at whip in 2006. It's just, it was such an early, yeah. we're in such infancy. Like, but that wasn't a thing back it's then. It's being put in place by us who were yeah. that age back then, you know? Yeah. And now we've grown up, so we kind of know what we need in place yeah. because we know what it's like to be in the situation. Yeah. I identify, like, I, I remember I talked to people about stuff that, like, not that we went through, that we didn't, there's no horror stories or anything like that, but I'm like, holy shit, man, like, Jesus, that's not right, you know yeah. what I mean? And not in a bad way, again, not saying we were taking advantage of renting like that, but it just, it was, it was irregular, it wasn't unregulated. Like. But even things like when you're starting out, like having, having those older people in place to tell you like, what pay you should be asking for, you know? Yeah, you'd. Yeah, and I mean like, like, okay, we have, we have people under 18 in Fight Factory. I'm usually the one who drives them home. I will always drop them to their house. I will talk to their parents on the phone and say, hey, I'm the one driving them today. You know, I I'll make sure I get them home by this time. Like yeah. I have no problem doing that stuff. I know a lot of people in other promotions have no problem doing that stuff. Um, so yeah, I I can only really speak about Five Factory and the Irish School of Wrestling because again, we have people training in yeah, both yeah. schools. I presume other schools have something similar in place. Yeah. Or if you reach out and you've got concerns, you can ask them. They should have no problem telling you this is how we run. Yeah, and and that's a good thing as well to be accountable and to be able to like. School should be able to do what Katie Harvey just did. Now, I don't think... No, probably not as well as you are because like, of your background and experience and stuff like that, but school should be able to give you a general kind of perspective on what Katie Harvey does, and they should be able to answer questions openly. If, you, like, if, if you're training somewhere... Say you're listening to this in the UK or something, and you're looking to train in somewhere, and you ask these questions, if those questions get shut down, don't go to that school. Because mm-hmm. they're basic questions that everyone should be able to answer publicly, and, and being accountable is an important thing. And I think having a standard and holding people to that standard is is important so uh yeah very serious answer yes uh, i'm just trying to think how to make it more fun um, we, we, we also have pizza parties there you go pizza parties there's the that's win. looking after people's mental health what well. would you want if you were going to a wrestling school like if you want to learn inside the ropes keen what would you kind of i want to learn like on the first day i want to learn how to do like a destroyer because that's a really cool move <laughs> You are the kind of trainee that I sit down in the corner <laughs> and I, I, I go through their expectations of what wrestling <laughs> yes, training is. Yes, yes. Oh. Are the destroyers in the first day? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I have had to genuinely have that talk with people. Oh, um, I've had people who have had two or three sessions under their belt and I'm sitting there watching training and I see them heading up to the top rope and I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, Get down now. Like, you know, that kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, oh, I've seen the bigger boys doing it. That bigger boy's been training for six years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, we should have finished on the jackass question. Um, <laughs> but, but a great answer and a legitimate answer. And there you go. We learned something. To 
towards the end of our slow blows guys uh, we'll be back next week send in more questions uh, but we gotta go it's fucking late here so anyway guys until next week we'll be back with the flagship and our slow blows get tickets for SummerSlam eventbrite.ie uh, and we shall see then the Woke Keens will they be able to get it together one more week guys to get it all together become a team get the chemistry I want to hear you guys getting working it and we want an update next week uh, but until then for Corporate Keen for Katie Harvey I've been Rick Nash and that's the bottom line because Loblo said so. If I lose the captaincy, I'm actually going to kill her. <laughs> <laughs>